Okay, what we're going to look at here are some very helpful Go Live workspace tips, uh, focusing mainly on what I like to call the page window. And the page window, let me just quickly define that for you, is when you double click on a page, this window that pops up. We're going to look at what all the stuff is within here. Okay, so with that in mind, I'm going to sort of preface this whole thing by saying that the page window is really what you're going to be doing the majority of your work in, so therefore it is very important to know all the stuff that is in here. We're going to go over all the tabs and basically everything that's in here, just as I said before. So, first thing we're going to look at is the layout mode in Go Live. Now, using the layout mode is very helpful for designers because most designers want to design visually impactive websites. Um, and they don't want it to be concerned with coding, and that's exactly what the layout mode allows you to do. It's just drag and drop, you know, drag an object out, link it to an image, you're done. Go Live codes everything for you. Very nice that way. Um, but the layout mode is what is concerned a WYSIWYG editor. And if you don't know what a WYSI, WYSIWYG editor is, you're probably thinking, what the heck is a WYSIWYG editor? I'm going to show you right now what a WYSIWYG editor is. WYSIWYG stands for what you see is what you get. Where does WYSIWYG come from? What you see is what you get. WYSIWYG. I didn't come up with that word. I don't know who did. But that's what WYSIWYG is. What you see is what you get. So that's what the layout mode is in Go Live, and that's what makes it so easy to use because you drag and drop, and what you see is what you get. So you don't have to worry about having to do all that coding in the background. Uh, if you're a designer, you're probably going to spend the majority of your time in this mode. All right, and the second mode is the frames mode and it's not showing anything because I have no frames. Frames were very popular back in the day but you're probably not going to use them now. Um, some people still use them but usually the extent people use them is very minimal so um, you can play around the frames mode but chances are you're not really going to design close to the majority of the sites you're going to design with frames um, so it's not very important anymore. The third um, tab is the source code tab and this is for those of us that are coders okay this is just the code all that code that's written behind the scenes um, for those of us that are designers and like to use the layout mode um, the source code is still good to be able to go through and use um, you should be able to come in here and be able to dig around and optimize it um, you know fix little mistakes check things out to be able to tweak your code um, I do and then you also have the outline view, which is kind of this unique uh, way to look at your code. If you get used to it um, and you learn how to use it, it's actually very neat. It's very cool. It's um, and it's very quick. Um, but the outline mode, I mean, I could devote an entire tutorial showing you how to use the outline mode. Um, so I'm not going to get into that now. I'm just going to show you that uh, it has something to do with coding. Um, then there's the preview mode, which is very cool. The preview mode. Um, which is kind of messed up here because you can see my image is way off screen. <laughs> so it's not previewing correctly. But the preview mode is actually a browser that's built into Go Live. It's actually the Opera web browser. I don't know how many of you have heard of Opera, but I'm sure some of you have. Um, and the, what's so nice about that is you can test out links that you have hooked up, you can test out JavaScript, all kinds of things because it's actually a mini browser within. Go Live itself, and you can also have it set up. You can have Go Live set up to automatically update the Opera browser whenever Opera software releases a new version of the browser. So it's very interesting. And then this last one, pre PDF preview. You click that, and it converts your website to a PDF. Not permanently. You know, you still have your site, but um, it's just you know, it creates a generates a PDF file um, for quick delivery to clients if you don't want to upload everything and you know all of that stuff. So that is what those six tabs are. Next up is this little head word. If you click on the little arrow, down drops the head section of the site. And in the head section of the site, you can do such things as, well, let's look at the head sections here in the tool. You can add keyframes. You can add automatic refresh. You can add fav icons. Uh, you can add comments. You can add all kinds of things up into the head section. And you can even add, over here in the smart menu, you can add head actions. Uh, so there's a lot of cool stuff you can do up in the head section. You can also change the title of your page just by selecting that title section. I can change it to Planet Photography, just like that. There we go. 
and we've changed the title of the page. Over here to the far right, we have these four icons here. The first one is the only one I'm going to get into any kind of detail at all about, but let me quickly touch on the other three. This one is a DHTML timeline editor, which is very cool. I'm going to have a couple tutorials coming up on using DHTML. It's very neat stuff. There's also a JavaScript editor and a CSS editor, but right here is the page properties editor. When I select that, I need to open up my inspector palette right there. When I select that, the Properties palette allows me to do things such as changing the title of the page, changing the default text color, changing the default link color, active link color, and visited link color. But it also allows me to set an image as my background, adjust margin, margins, I should say, for the width and height. Uh, I can change the color of my background by selecting this, or if I double click, I get the traditional color picker here, if it's going to allow me. Let me just change to orange for a second. If I double click it, I get this color picker. So I can select, you know, a tan if I wanted. Select whatever I want. Or you could check this off and select an image as your background. You drag the pick whip over to your site window and select the image you want. So with that in mind, I'm going to move the inspector palette out of the way because it's really all we're going to need it for, if I recall correctly. And right up here, we have this little flyout menu. When we click it, we can change the language of our page to any of the languages in the list. We can change the document type, which right now is XHTML 1.0 transitional to any of the others that are selectable. And we could actually make some of these others selectable if we change the markup from H XHTML. We can convert it back to HTML. This is actually pretty helpful if you have an HTML page or a whole bunch of HTML pages and you want to convert them to the newest, most recent HTML, which is XHTML at this point in time. Um, you can just come in here and click convert to XHTML and that does the job for you. You can save this as, but it's not traditional save as, like you think, you know, I want to save my file, you know, whatever. No, this is saving your file as stationary, a template, or a component, all of which we're going to get into in future tutorials. And then if you're dealing with templates, this is a whole bunch of stuff on templates, which we are also going to get to in a, another tutorial. And then over here, we can reveal the file in our site window or in Bridge, which basically is just going to bring up and show us where in our file structure this specific file sits, this specific file being index.html. And we can also change what we see on the status bar. And the status bar is what I'm getting to last, which is this bar down here. Obviously, the center section is your work area. I don't need to explain much about that, except that the sliders are used for moving up and down and to the right and the left. All right. A cool thing with GoLive is if you're a coder and designer like myself, I sort of like to branch out both, although I consider myself more of a designer than a coder. I'm not big into the coding thing, although I do what I have to do. And sometimes doing what you have to do requires you to be able to see the WYSIWYG editor, okay, the layout mode, and be able to code at the same time. And that Right down here in the very bottom left-hand corner, you see two arrows with a line between them. If you click that, it gives you the split page view. And that gives you the source code and layout in one window. So it's very nice, very cool, and very helpful, I should add. So if I can get that to go away, there we go. We're going to look at the next thing in line, which is this little 100% thing, which is pretty obvious. You can zoom in on your page now. Um, that is not new to Go Live CS2, although what is new to Go Live CS2, if you hold Control and Alt, it brings up the hand, okay, so you can drag your site around, but you can also just grab the hand here over in the tool box, okay, so when you zoom in like really close, you can just move around and look around, okay, now, let me just crunch the page up a little bit, I've zoomed into 150%, I quickly want to get back to 100, I can just click this arrow and just go back to 100, okay, just like that. Quick and easy. And right over here, let me move back up. If I, let me move the site window here out of your way so it's not distracting you. This little arrow here towards the middle of the document, if you select that, what that's going to do is change what this shows me, okay? Or, to, excuse me, let's come down here to show to do that. Um, what this, I can tell me, it, I can have it tell me what view configuration, which is kind of pointless because up here it tells you what view configuration you have, and chances are you're going to know what view configuration you have. You can look at your page dimensions, which in this case are 929 by 371, quite an odd size. Um, you can look at the document statistic, is that what it said? Document statistic, yes. Um, the size of the file, put it in my words. Um, 
I'm going to set it at page dimensions right now. You can see there's all kinds of other different things you can look at in through here. There's settings, there's options, there's all kinds of cool stuff. I'm not going to get into all that right now because we're kind of pressed for time. We've crossed the 10-minute mark. And right next to that is a code tree, I believe is what it's called technically. I don't know the actual technical name, but um, you can think of it as a code tree. Any object you select, if I select this button here, it's going to show me how far into the code tree it is. You see, I've got our HTML tags, then within the HTML is our body, then within that is a div, our layer one, then in that another div tag and a table, okay, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, until you get into the image, okay? So it just shows you where your object is placed within the hierarchy of your code. Okay, so if you don't do much coding, that probably meant absolutely nothing to you. But don't worry about that. And over here, this little uh, button, you might not have it. I actually honestly forget how I had it, although it's not very hard. I believe it's up here in the flyout menu. Yes, that's right. I even explained it before. In the status bar, um, line break mode, you can turn that off. Okay, you said it takes that little button away, if you can even see that. But the line break mode, you can just change the line break mode from the windows, which is the CRLF to uh, Unix and Mac line break modes. I usually keep it at default, but there may be exceptions. And that's it. That's basically everything there is to know about the um, work or the page window, as I like to refer to it as, not the workspace window, the page window, um, beside the fact that the little minus, square, and X up here do things such as maximize, minimize, and close your document. Okay, but I didn't think I should include that in the tutorial, although I just did. Uh, but anyway, that's the end of this one, and I uh, hope you go check out the site, www.tutvid.com. That's T-U-T-V-I-D.com. Lots of other video tutorials there. Um, if you like this one, subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube. Um, but that's it for now, and I hope you go check out some of the other stuff that I have, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.